Daddy Ho Lions fans, welcome to the Detroit Lions podcast, episode 321. The episode we didn't think we were going to do. Here it is, the official podcast for Reddit, the official Detroit Lions podcast for Reddit. I'm your host, Chris, and I am dashing at that. With me is Andy, the Sandman, one of our longtime friends in the Slow Lights. Don't forget his channel, Sandman 7. Sandman, Slow Lights with Sandman. God, I got to get it right. We'll, we'll get that right later, <laughs> Andy. Slow Lights. I was trying slow to lights. jump ahead to the volleyball hair over there. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, the Riz Risen, how you doing, brother? Uh, I didn't have any time to put product in my hair, so I'm au natural today. <laughs> Well, 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 I was actually going to have a pair of pants as a prop to hold up just to prove that I was pants free right now. We got a got a big hire today. Brad Holmes coming in. This is good mm-hmm. news. Good news. Um, I think we just want to get right into it because we got to talk about it. you guys ready to go. Let's, yeah, do let's do it. Let's kick this off and break it down. All right, let's get into it. Brad Holmes, Rams college scouting director hired by a team named the Detroit Lions that we are all familiar with. <laughs> what a deal. This this is what I'm I'm happy with it. And and we talked about it in the podcast uh on Tuesday Riz. I'm yep. really really happy about this guy and one of the things that makes me the happy happiest is his emotional intelligence and his ability to not have to be the smartest guy in the room. We talk a lot about how pendulums swing so far from one end to the other in these hires. This is actually probably a pretty good swing, right? Yes, absolutely. The the fact that this is a guy who is a consensus builder, not an authoritarian, not a guy who's going to be offended when an underling questions a position that he has. That's and, and by the way, that was a recurring theme. Um, other than Ed Dodds, who I don't know well enough to whether that qualifies for him or not, but the other people that they interviewed for the GM role all kind of fit that bill much more as people who are who have worked with other people very well in the past um in in different organizations in different circumstances and different jobs this is a uh, this is a reflection on a a a deliberate move away from the smartest guy in the room syndrome yeah and i'm very happy about that and i think most lions fans should be very happy about that because that means that when you have a, a his most famous pick is aaron donald obviously but let's say Let's say you've got a, uh, a a running back that you like at the top of the second round, uh, and you already have two second round running backs on the team, and you have a veteran who's a, one of the best in NFL history. Maybe somebody's gonna be like, "Hmm, can you can you can you maybe think about our value investment here at the running back position? You know, maybe maybe we're doing a little bit too much mm-hmm. overkill here." Um, <laughs> and if anybody did that against Bob Quinn, he was gonna bust out that baseball bat from the famous picture and, and ram it where the sun don't shine. Ooh. That's not the way that this guy will oh. operate. That's 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 not what Brad Holmes is going to do. Oh gosh, no, absolutely not. Uh, really quick, I had to call it Ryan Ryan Restigen. Thank Nestigen. Thank you so much for the uh, sl- uh, super chat. God, I'm going to call it the Slack chat. Uh, he came in with uh, <laughs> respectful conversations in the Slack. I got all those things together now, and uh, no, it was good. It was good. It winds up okay. Things are things are all yeah. all good yeah, to go. Good. So thank it's you, good. Ryan. Appreciate that very much. Um, I want to hit. Sam, man, this is a big one. I think this is right up your alley. Uh, we got Mike in the chat with Detroit Free Press already hates this. Carlos came out immediately hating this. Um, but they loved oh, this Matt. This is you, Andy. I'm not touching this. <laughs> they, they loved Matt Patricia. So does that mean that we maybe hit gold here? I mean, I think Carlos has articles pre-written about every potential draft pick and employee that <laughs> You know, talks about how their, their mother's aunt, you know, uh, you know, didn't pay speeding tickets back in the 60s. You know, like uh, none of that surprises me. None of that surprises yeah. me anymore. I um, I do think personally that this hire, regardless of how you feel about Brad Holmes as a GM or whatever, was very well thought out. And we need to applaud the team for spending this amount of time looking. Not falling now, to the lot pressure, of right? Will, yeah. Yeah. And a lot of people will say, oh, well, they brought somebody in to help them find Bob Quinn and look how that worked out. That fe- felt more like a boys club thing now. Okay. And, and we, didn't, we, we didn't know that at the time either no. because it was, it was all new for us because they'd never done anything like that before. They'd never really gone outside. I mean, I, I don't remember when they hired Matt Millen. I don't remember what the, 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 the tim, timber of the room was, but... Um, the timber. Martin Mayhew was, was an internal <laughs> hire. Yeah, Tim, yeah. basically. Uh, so, 
so when they replaced that, you're right. You know, they brought in Ernie Acorsi, who was a guy that, that I had utmost respect for, for what he did um, building the Browns in the late 80s. Um, and then he, he did a lot of other things with a lot of other teams. Um, there, there was no reason to doubt his wisdom uh, at the time, but it turned out that he was very short-sighted and, and yep. played the boys club card. Like you just said, that's, and, he, and we paid for it. He really? knew who he wanted yeah. and we paid the price for it. Now that could have worked out. It didn't, but you have to applaud the forts. They have done a very thorough search. I'm sure once they hire a head coach that will be saying the same thing, they've, they've went through everything very thoroughly. They've interviewed tons of people. And I think that if they felt strongly about homes who am i to say anything different at this point i think you know uh, this hire is special in many ways but i'm sure we'll get into that a little yeah, bit later. yeah um we got paul meyer asking i think he's probably not a local detroit area folk uh forgive me but is detroit free press just like a news source in detroit or is it something else it's one of the two newspapers there hopefully the one that goes away when they can sell it to one because <laughs> i just can't I look, you guys know, you know, you know how I'm going to be, I'm going to be respectful. I just think from a marketing perspective, the dumbest thing you can do with what is it? A 225 year old enterprise, respectful, journalistic thing, the Detroit free press, turn it into freep. It's like the Nickelodeon version of a, <laughs> of a name for a newspaper. It just took away all, all that, that. The, every, all, everything that had been built up, the credibility, the culture, the whole thing of what it was, it, that was such a dumb move. Uh, whoever whoever that, w it, that did that should never, ever work in any kind of role of marketing again. God. Ugh. But there are some good people there. I'll say that. There are there are some very good people there. Um, mm -hmm. People that I respect a whole heck of a lot. Um, Mr. Menares is not one of them. No. Well, and, and he, he you can respect him in a different way. Right, his he plays the he is the um what's the guy in wrestling? God, I can't think of the name. The the heel, the heel. yeah, the heel. Yeah. He plays the heel one hundred and ten percent. He does. And, just, and, like and, Valenti, and there right? there I mean, is a place for that. Mm -hmm. But if that's the only thing you've got, that's disappointing. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. It's it's it is what it is. But that's the nature of the business today. I don't One spend of the my dollar. Why on you it. like a wrestling heel is because every now and then they'll do something that's really really cool. That's like oh. Oh, maybe he's not. Maybe he does have a. His, his heart has a little bit of red, and it. it's not totally black. Um, yeah. that's that's not the angle that they've chosen there. Didn't and that's very unfortunate. Oh God, what was? It? Never mind. I'll, I'll stop. I don't know wrestling. Yeah. Wasn't the Rock a heel? Didn't he start off the, the Dwayne? He did. Yeah, he, did. he started off as a heel. I thought so. All right. Um, let's see. Riley Dawson, thank you so much. All I know is that Brad Holmes would have taken donald over ebron so he sounds great already yeah 110 percent, man. Oh, man you know and and uh jeff already kind of mentioned this briefly but there's something to be said about a room that has 15 minds in it rather than one and yeah. like the ebron pick was one of those picks we oh we've got uh, we've got our new new orleans offensive coordinator coming in he's gonna need a jimmy graham type of guy draft Ebron yeah that, that's a short-sighted move that we've seen what kind of dividends can happen when you just take the best player at a position of need and you know see what those teams are doing versus teams like the Lions who are constantly like Jeff mentioned taking running backs in the second round once every two years <laughs> it's like I think it averages out to almost be like once every two years or so it, it is <laughs> and it like going That's, back over a decade <laughs> yeah so i'm i'm hopeful that somebody like holmes will come in and and let, let's not, not do ebron picks let's talk <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about the process a little and then we'll talk about holmes because i, I think you started it uh riz and sam and about how long they took to go through the process and didn't fold to the pressure people started getting scared that other teams were going to pick our people up Salah go into the Jets, and I'm just using a head coach as an example. I know this is Jim, so don't freak out in the in the uh, in the chat, folks. But <laughs> him go to the Jets a second time. We lost him. Why did we sign him when he was in the building? Right? People freak out. This is an organization that's doing a good job with a search, taking their time, and they're owning this. And I think you know people talk about the quality of the job and how how good of a, a landing place Detroit is. 
the way they ran this is, I think, one of the things that elevated Detroit in the minds of the people that could work here and may consider working here. And I think, you know, I, I, I don't know this for sure. I wasn't there. We talked about the Canary Chef Riz and, and, and how really everything is speculation unless you're in the room. But this was a, a matchmaking session, I think, between uh, with Chris Spielman, Rod Wood, Sheila For- Ford Hamp, um, Barry Sanders, <laughs> all, all working in, in a small bit, all working together, yeah. though, to find, you know, you sit down in an interview and you're asking Robert Sala, who would you like to work with as a GM? Why would you like to work with that person? What do they bring to the party? And understand how their philosophies work together so that we don't wind up with this boys club, as, as Sam Mann said, with Patricia and Quinn, but we have people that can work together. I mean, I think about what Amy Trask said about hiring people. You can hire a coach first and bring a GM later as long as they can work together. You get the best guys, the best guys, and then they're adults. They, ha- they should be able to work together, but I think they worked in this process to make sure that they could get folks that work together. I would expect a coach hire to become very, very quickly because I think that they've made their decision on both at the same time. It's just that um, Holmes is the first kind of domino to drop here. That wouldn't surprise me at all if we hear a coach announced tomorrow. I don't know that, but it wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, and uh, uh, as, as I told uh, Chris last night, um, when I had him cut the, the Brad Holmes portion of the video, out of what we recorded on Tuesday, because I had an inkling that something was going to happen. Um, I, I have a pretty good idea of who it's going to be, but I don't know, and I won't speculate on that. But uh, there are whispers, and I don't know whether to trust them or not, so I'll, I'll just I'll just let it be. But I, I have pre-written two of them for Lions Wire, and, um, and I will uh, let you know who, who, who I pre-wrote after and, the process is done. And well, I no, because suggest... it will be posted two seconds after the announcement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, yes, that, that, that's, that's very true. <laughs> And um, I, I got in the habit of doing that when the Browns were making changes every nine months, and uh, it's, that's it's right. served me very well. That's right. Watch the, the Detroit Lions podcast YouTube channel at 6, 6 a.m. to see what comes out, and, what, and you might find out what, what Riz asked us to cut up. Yeah. <laughs> good fun, good fun, good fun. No, that was that was great stuff, and um, it was it was that was a good little little thing that was fun to do really. i appreciate a lot of people have sent good feedback about that so I, I like that and that's something chris and you and i talked about it's something that we're going to try to do a little bit more of if there's something that's poignant that comes out of a, a an hour-long show that's you know two and a half minutes that you want to watch like that um, if we that, can get two and a half to, we're going to try to do more of that kind of stuff if we can get two and a half good minutes together out of an hour boy are we are yeah, we man, that, that's a wow that's a record look at me. us <laughs> <laughs> unexpected, <laughs> unexpected jewels. All right. So we talk about the pro- process and it, it is this kind of arranged marriage thing. I, I, I like how they did it. Uh, not, you know, not going outside the, the Chris Spielman thing though. A lot of the conversation around this, you haven't heard Rod Wood's name. Barry Sanders was interviewed yesterday and I forget where M- M- McAfee McAfee did it. I uh, had an interview with him. Sure. Never mentioned Rod Wood once. Never mentioned Rod Wood a Not. single time in that interview. Um, tells me Rod is kind of letting the process. He's taking maybe more of a patriarchal role in the process than a kind of, kind of hands-on. And it feels a lot like this is Chris Spielman's, uh, this, his ball of wax to play with. Mm-hmm. Sam, man, what do you think? Is, is it, does, that give you, does that give you pause or does that give you more hope for the hire, having Spielman at the helm? I- I think anytime you have a person of power that's willing to admit that other people know more than them, I think we're doing good. And I think that that takes a strong person to do something like that. Yeah, it and does. so for Rod Wood to take a step back uh, is you know, an indicator of that. I think Chris Spielman definitely was brought in to bring his hands into the mix and and figure out who he thinks the lions should bring in for a lions culture and i think if rod wood did what he did last time which he was much more involved with the hiring of bob quinn mm-hmm. and with the hiring of everybody else uh, not to say you know he was the one that made the final decision but he was definitely in all the meetings and you know it was basically him and martha were the two people that had say in those rooms um i think it's important i think you know when they first came out and said that Chris Spielman was coming in and he was going to assist with this, I think the description that they had for his job role was perfect. He's here to be Rod Wood's right-hand man with football knowledge. Yep. He's an extension of Rod Wood. And if Rod Wood trusts him in that way, then, you know, we may start to see some of the benefits of that. 
Yeah, no, ab- absolutely. And I think he does trust him in that way. Uh, <laughs> Riz, let's really quick, just before we get into um, kind of Holmes as 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 a person uh, and, and kind of his expertise, well, let's, and I think this will lead into Holmes, uh, the conversation about this kind of teamwork effort about putting this together and putting these people together. It very much wasn't teamwork before. We, we talked a little bit about the emotional IQ of Brad Holmes. Seeing Chris Spielman and, and him being invested and him exhibiting some of that, but still taking a leadership role, Rod Wood kind of feeling that, this feels like this may be, uh, if, this, if this plays out through the organization, this may be a real healthy way from the water boy through the players all the way through management to communicate their needs and, and not hit a wall. And I, I feel like when you know what the other party really needs or wants, y- you are better for it as an organization. It seems like there's a definite respect for the broader thought going on. You know, they're it's, they're not just tied into doing one specific thing, and I think that that's that's a change. And and I've seen that in other organizations that I've covered. I saw that change very clearly in Cleveland a year ago when they hired Andrew Barry and brought in Kevin, Kevin Spansky first and brought in Andrew Barry, but he'd already been there, so it was wasn't like they were bringing in somebody new. The, the ability to collaborate, but have independent thought within the collaboration, and to have all those different thoughts respected, even if it's crazy. Like, like maybe, maybe somebody in the room now is going to be encouraging, like, hey, let's trade up to number two. Let's take Justin Fields. That's our guy, because I feel that strongly about it. And it won't be a yes or no. It'll be like, well, well tell me why you think that. You know, what, what are the ramifications of doing that? How much are we sacrificing from elsewhere? Do we have enough assets to cover if we make that move up that we can, you know, fill those other holes? Um, and I don't think that's something that Bob Quinn and Matt Patricia would have done. Uh, I don't think that's something that Martin Mayhew would have done. I think that was one of his faltering, faltering points. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I do think yeah. that that's, that's definitely the way the Rams have worked. That's the way the Seahawks have operated. I know a lot of people were excited about the John Schneider who was never available. It was a complete <laughs> BS thing the entire time. He was just getting but a people raise. got excited about it. <laughs> yeah. um, that's what they do. Uh, if you w- look at what the Saints have done uh, with with Terry Fontenot and uh, and uh, Jeff Ireland, um, who I thought was going to be a a more prominent candidate in the process for the Lions than he was, uh, it turns out. But uh, you know that that's what they've done. Uh, in Carolina, has just hired and his name escapes me, uh, but he he's coming from Seattle, and that he, he's bringing that in where they have Matt Rule as their coach already. And he's, he's got more power than a lot of rookie head coaches normally get. Uh, and I think that this is brought in to sort of, you know, bring him into that mindset as well of like, okay, we like what you're doing, but maybe, maybe you need a little bit more guidance and, and maybe we can be respectfully talking about that. And I, I, I hope that's what's set up here. I think the way you described it between Spielman and Rod Wood, and I also think that Sheila was much more involved in this search, mm-hmm. um, specifically in the GM side than, than has than I think a lot of people would would expect. Um, yeah. And I think that's a positive thing, by the way. I think having an owner who is invested in the the wins and losses, um, and not to say that Martha wasn't, but I think that Sheila, you know, she, she talks about all the time about how she was a tennis player and how she was a bad loser. Um, if, if you know people like that, you know that that doesn't go away as you get older. No, nope. um, it, it just manifests itself and you start throwing cards at, at the people across the table from you when you lose in Euchre, when they when they go alone and you have a loner of your own that's, oh my god this is <laughs> it's a very michigan podcast yeah absolutely i'm going alone i mean is that even really like a real euchre rule is that one of the the table rules that we set up god i don't know my family plays it that way yeah yeah, yeah. that's how we do it too okay that's great i have that's that's a that's a reference that's one thing is i love you for is your references uh <laughs> Let me let me pull in just a couple of the guys in the super chat. Uh, we were were we close on Dodds or was that a pipe dream, Riz? Uh, he was a very serious candidate. I think they liked Holmes more, and I think that his Dodds from from what I know of him is a very intense guy. That came across in the video we referenced it Tuesday night uh, when we did the podcast about the uh, his his enmity towards the the wild card banner in Indianapolis hanging from the Raptors, which I think is a great move on his part by the way yeah. uh, I agree with that yeah, uh, I don't same. I don't I don't understand how an organization like the Lions has so many retired numbers um, that bothers me it bothers me my my 
basketball team, the Cleveland Cavaliers, have the third most amount of retired jerseys of any franchise. They've won one title in 55 years. That bothers me, too. Uh, <laughs> if you so, can't ha- hang a title banner, you got to hang something up in them empty yeah, rafters. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's just stupid. Um, and and you know, it, it's I, I think his intensity in that, um, and I think the fact that he's he has bounced around a little bit, I think that you know, he came from Seattle, went to Indianapolis. Um, they have done very, very well under him. And he did a very good job in both parts. I think the personality fit was more important here. And I think that's one of the reasons, yep. one of the big reasons why Brad Holmes is they just clicked with him better. Yeah. I yep. don't think it was a negative against Dodds at all. Um, it is interesting that he is not going to get a job anywhere else. It looks like he, he did interview with the Panthers uh, with your consideration for that. He did interview with the Falcons. He did not take an interview request with Washington. So that, that sort of tells you that he was being really picky too. And yep. uh, he, he knows that his time will come, I think. Yep. Uh, and and maybe it'll come in Indianapolis soon. Who knows? So we got another insider. This guy's, uh, I don't want to give away Kevin's name, but in the super chat, uh, <laughs> Dodds was a, a secret agent scouting out the Lions for the Colts Stafford trade possibilities. You didn't hear this from me. There you go. So. <laughs> He was he was working. Weirder at... things have happened. <laughs> <laughs> it is the NFL. All right. Adam Gase got hired again by a team that had just played his old team. I don't I don't know how that happened. I suggest yeah. for you. Yeah, that's the. Uh, hmm. um, okay, I want to talk about Brad Holmes as a <laughs> as a as a as a uh, a person, an evaluator, a talent. Um, Aaron Donald. Oh, everybody hits, and even a blind squirrel gets a nut once in a while. But we touched this on this on Tuesday, and I think. This is really, really, really important, especially with the Lions position this year with only five draft picks. He's known as a guy that can trade away those high round picks, turn them into more picks, and just hit, 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 hit on all those lower picks. This is huge for a team that needs talent and it doesn't have the picks to get it. Sam, and why, why, why are we excited about how he's going to run the draft this year? The most exciting thing about Brad Holmes to me is that he's a 540 degree change from Bob Quinn. 540. That's, that's all the way in another half. (laughs) Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. That's the new Xbox. 180 is not enough. You got to spin him a couple more times. (laughs) That's the new Xbox, right? But we're, we're talking about a guy who has spent his entire time doing scouting, which Bob Quinn never scouted. Bob Quinn was never anywhere around right. that. He room. was a pro scout. He was not he was a college scouting yeah, pro scout. personnel. Yep. Yep. And yeah. we didn't even get to see any of the reaps of that really outside of Marvin Jones. But what excites me is that he's shown the ability, like you said, Chris, to find talent later in the draft, not stick himself by only picking players that fit his team's scheme Uh, He's not afraid to take guys that maybe are a little bit off the beaten path. Um, You know, I think there's a lot of value to that. And I think one of the other benefits that he's going to bring in and, and, you know, the lions kind of mentioned it um, that they were looking for a leader of men Mm -hmm. at their coaching position. I I'm not so sure that didn't also fall into the GM position. Sure. Yeah. Brad Holmes is going to lead a scouting department that he's going to have firm and direct ideas about who they're looking for, what they're looking for, and isn't going to shoot down ideas like Bob Quinn did, Um, isn't going to send scouts places and then just ignore what they have to say. And I think that something like that just has to be applauded. And, you know, we have to be excited to see what somebody can do like Brad Holmes. This guy worked for four years without a first round pick. They think about that. Now, Rizzo and they still got talent in there too. They're in the playoffs. <laughs> there they are, sitting in the They're playoffs. And here playing. we, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Now They're still me... playing with a quarterback with a broken thumb, and they beat Seattle. So they gave away picks it's to fun. get that quarterback, right? And that's where I wanted to they point. Did. I want to point this, uh, and, and then they, this. That's what started their run of not having first round picks is is getting Jared Goff, right? Now right. I want to ask you, Riz. I don't feel like we have the ability to to kind of trade up this year to get a quarterback. I, I feel like Matthew Stafford's in this year, but I feel like next year or the year after we have a guy here who's probably going to work some picks right now. He's probably going to make some trades, maybe trade away that first pick. And I, I'm, I'm pure speculation, right? We hired him today. There's, there's not a lot to work with here, but right. say you trade away the first pick, you get yourself a couple picks this year, maybe one next year. 
you start getting into a position where next year you could trade some of those picks away, get yourself your replacement in a year or two years for Matthew Stafford and have the talent already there. I, as, as crazy as this sounds and though this team looks, Matthew Stafford could play out the last two years of his contract and you could start fresh with your your guy at the top of the draft and not be murdering yourself at the and have a dearth of talent everywhere else. What do you think? Is this is this a plausible? Is this me just pipe dreaming or pipe, something else in a pipe? Uh, it, it's it, it's it's broad thinking, anyways. I'll give you that. Uh, I, it, There's a lighter. They have to they have to know. Um, and, and I'm sure that one of the discussions that they had in their interview was what What do you feel about Matthew Stafford? Is can he is he going to play in 2021 and then be gone? Or are you comfortable building around him until 2025, 2026, um, which is when Holmes' contract expires. It goes through the 2026 season. Uh, and and I, we don't know the answer to that yet. Uh, I have a feeling that Stafford probably knows it. Um, he's obviously not going to say it because he's, he's, that's just who he is. He's at Boyne Mountain right now. Right. Uh, <laughs> he's busy. Uh, <laughs> oh, man, uh, you you got um. I, I think that's going to weigh into the head coaching thing now. Uh, I think Holmes has a definite thought on where that's going to go. I think the head coach is going to have to have synergy with that. You can't have the, the disparate sides there. You can't have a coach who wants to build around Matthew Stafford or a coach who's like, I can't win with that guy. He's he's never won before. Get him out of here. Um, they're going to have to have the same mindset on that. Yep. I don't think that's something where they can be really collaborative. But but planning for the future. Yeah, that that's very important. Uh, that's when, when when he was he went through the Rams when what they were lacking was a quarterback. He was there yep. from the transition from Kurt Warner to Mark Bulger to Jeff Smoker for a brief time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then in, then they had Case Keenum and they had a bunch of other just rando dudes, um, and they went all in on Goff. And Goff is not as good as Matthew Stafford, and that team got to a Super Bowl uh, and is still playing now with a lesser quarterback, which leads me to believe that he is also a guy who can see that maybe maybe we can build a really good team around a good, not great quarterback. Yeah. And I think that's probably where, where most people in the NFL view Matthew Stafford is, is that he's really good, but he's not, he's not a guy that can win on his own like Aaron Rodgers, like Patrick Mahomes, even though they're not doing that now. They have shown that ability to do that. Um, mm -hmm. If you get the point there, um, Deshaun Watson is, is close to that status. Although the way that the Texans organization is imploding, <laughs> that's really going to be tested. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, they, they they've got to have an idea there, um, and maybe that's his, maybe that's his path. Is like, okay, you know what? How do how did I win with golf? Well, I had a monster defense. I had playmakers. I had impact talent. The number one thing that I think this team lacks is impact talent on both yep. sides of the football. Matthew Stafford can be that. He needs guys as weaponry who can be it. DeAndre Swift, maybe, maybe he will be that. Um, he showed some some good signs. He was better than I thought he'd be as a rookie, quite honestly, and I'm, I'm happy to take the L on that. But defensively, Trey Flowers is a great football player. He's great. He's not a difference maker. Mm -hmm. you know, Darius mm -hmm. Slay, for as erratic as he was, he was a difference maker. He could yeah. make the big play. The moment was never too big for Darius Slay. Um, it ironically was in Philadelphia, but <laughs> when he was in Detroit, it, it was there for him. I'll, I'll, I'll go to the Browns for a second. Denzel Ward, not the best cornerback in the league, but in a big game, that dude's money. They got Miles freaking Garrett, who can make an impact like that. Mm -hmm. Jarvis Landry, not a great wide receiver. He's not better than Kenny Galladay, but he's a guy who makes, he steps up in big games and makes big plays when they need it. The Lions don't have that yet. And I think that's, if Holmes wants to build around Stafford, that's going to be his course of action is to find those, as, as our friend Kevin would say, get some dudes, man. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And let me ask you, um, I'm, uh, and I'm going to hit this. I'm going to hit Psychedelic Monk. Thank you very, very much for the super chat. Uh, Lions made a good choice. It'll take time, but it's a first good step. Absolutely. Um, I want to get to the, something that Mike Hodges said, too. And uh, I think this is a really, really good point. Like, uh, like coaching, team. coaching, coaching. What are we going to do with those picks and players? And I think that's that's a key point yes. here. I want to start out by asking you, and, I, and this is just your stem. You can run with it from here. What do you think the future of Bev is? What about Daryl Bevel? Is he does he see any kind of role in this team? OC, HC. What do you think? 
I am really hoping that Pittsburgh hires him as their offensive coordinator. Honestly, I, I think a clean break is probably the best way to go there. Yep. Uh, uh, and that's not a reflection on Daryl Bevel and his performance in Detroit. I don't like having legacy coaches like that. I think it's very tough to have a new regime come in and you have a guy who was just in charge there last year. Uh, I don't know how that power dynamic would work. I'm, I don't know Daryl Bevel well enough to know that if he would make that work. Um, so I kind of hope that he's gone. I really hope he's not the head coach. That would be for me, probably the worst choice they can make as a head coach would be bringing Daryl Bevel back as that. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Okay. But I, I, I know there are people who see it the exact opposite way. They're like, oh, the continuity is great. He he did things. Even though he only won one game, there was a tangible difference in the Lions under Daryl Bevel than there was under Matt Patricia, and maybe Very, he deserves a chance to do that. I'm not of that mindset, but I respect that. Yep. Uh, Will Smith is of that mindset. He says, ditto. Sam, man, what are you thinking since since Risden's biting his tongue over there and turning his mouth into hamburger won't tell us? What do you think about head coach candidates? Where's your head bleeding right now? What are you looking at? You know, I, I never really like to stick my my name into this, you know, hat. But name. I, think I didn't think he was I going with name. I could do a really good job <laughs> if they wanted to hire me up. Uh, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, at, at this point, I kind of just have to let the process happen. I, I wouldn't be shocked if it's a, a, a candidate that's a little, you know, that's not one of the top guys, yeah, right? Yeah. But that fits what we're attempting to do. And I think, you know, it, it's not a perfect example. But when you have a team like what Caldwell built, whether you liked him as a coach or not, the culture he built was fantastic but he didn't have backing there. Yep. It stopped at Caldwell. It didn't go above Caldwell. <laughs> and that was a problem. That was a problem. That's why Martin Mayhew got fired. That's why Bob Quinn fired Caldwell. I would expect the Lions to, in the process of interviewing all these GMs, to ask the GMs, who would your guy be? If, you, if we hired you today, who would your guy be? And I think that they would use that information to get a guy that not only fits – brad holmes and what his plans for this team are but somebody that will fit the new lions culture that chris spielman and sheila are attempting to bring in and sure. i think that no matter who they choose if he's a culture fit i think that we'll see finally for the first time maybe ever a team that looks cohesive from the top down yeah. and that's something we've never seen ever. yeah yeah, agreed. Let me go out a little bit of a limb here because you, you guys know I'm not one normally to climb a tree, but here we go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the fact that we have a guy who's not been a GM precludes us from getting a head coach that hasn't been a head coach before. I don't think just because we hired a GM that is first time actually in the GM role means we have to hire like a Marvin Lewis. I think Robert Sala, I think Arthur Smith, uh, Dan Campbell, I think even yeah. Staley. I think all these guys are in the mix and possibilities at the head coach position. And I kind of oddly am still in love with the idea of a young, relatable head coach who's got more of an open mind and it will be communicative rather than somebody completely set in their ways that won't talk. I'm still locked in on Wade Phillips, my defensive coordinator. <laughs> Check There's his tweets. Wrong. And by the way, he has history yeah. with, with Holmes. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, he was with the Rams. And if he, um, in fact, uh, Brandon Staley, who is the guy that uh, um, you just alluded to, is the, the Rams' young defensive coordinator who cannot be interviewed yet because his team is still playing and they have not, nobody's asked for permission to interview him yet. Um, if they beat green Bay, that sort of puts that on ice for a little bit. So, so yep. if you're, if you're looking as, as to who to root for this weekend, if you're like praying to sale, you probably want the Packers to win um, as much as you don't want to root for green Bay. God. Sorry. Um, Can we get a tie? Is it, does that help us at all? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, um, but no, so seriously, so, I, but, but you... Staley, Staley comes from that. Arthur Smith is a guy who would fit that bill. Yep. Um, we talked about him a little bit the other night. He is an interesting guy in that he has maximized the talent that he's been given in Tennessee. He's got a lot of talent there, right? But he has been. He hasn't always. It. He's used it very effectively. Mm -hmm. um, and as I pointed out the other night, I, I didn't realize that it wasn't public knowledge that he was the son of the founder of FedEx. Um, he's, he's, his background with that, um, 
you know that coming that growing up he saw things from a different side side and perspective of things if, if that's a very results driven business where if you're not getting instant results on something it can be catastrophic and i think i think that breeds a certain level of pragmatism i don't know I, maybe i'm wishful thinking i think he's a very serious candidate i think stan uh, staley excuse me if if he wants to be a candidate will be a very serious candidate i still want marvin lewis i'm i yep. i i I'm gonna... i've smoked that pipe many times i'll, I'll let other people <laughs> you might want to say that. something a little uh, phrase I, that a little differently uh, yeah, um, um, i am I, so I'm turned not, that into a drop there is no I, I am not i am not immune to marvin's faults uh, just as uh, i'm not immune to, to brad holmes there are there are serious questions i have about brad holmes being the general manager some of those will hopefully get assuaged as we find out who's hired around him there damn well better be a football director of football ops who's done it before yep. in this building by next week. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I'm going to start to worry a little bit. Mm -hmm. I do have concerns about Brad Holmes only ever working for one other organization. Mm -hmm. One of the one of the appeals that I had for Ed Dodds was he saw it in Seattle. He saw what worked and what didn't. He went to Indianapolis under a completely different thing. That's that's the Chris Ballard. That's the Andy Reid tree. And he saw how that worked. And he can take from both of those things. Um, I like that. I like that concept. Um, I'm, I am a little worried that he's only going to see things the way that the Rams have done that. Now he was there an awful long time and, and was through different regimes. So he's seen what worked and what didn't work, but just in, well, he moved with the team from St. Louis to Los Angeles. <laughs> that, that is a concern. Um, and I don't think that's something that gets brought up enough, honestly. Yeah. But, and, and, you know, I, 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 I really hope it's an experienced coach. I really do. But so, I, I'm, I'm open-minded. I'm not going to mm -hmm. rule it out. And I'll bring this up again because I brought this up the other night. Uh, Tuesday was the one-year anniversary of the Browns hiring Kevin Stefanski. And uh, one of the, the Twitter gadflies of Cleveland sports ran a poll on that day. 57% of the people who responded of over 15,000 hated hated the hiring <laughs> of kevin stefanski he's still coaching now in cleveland in the divisional round mm -hmm. be very careful about overreacting yeah. to a hire one way or the other yep now i'm gonna go i'm gonna i'm gonna go back where i was a little bit and i'm talking about the the a young coach being okay because if you get the right coordinators in place i think that's that's the piece we watched Definitely. we watched wade phillips turn around rams defense that was was not good and 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 Staley took it to the next level. I'm not I'm not going to diminish that at all. But that's exactly where the Lions are defensively right now. And a young coach gets propped up by experienced coordinators. I like the idea right now of that kind of open communication style up and down the ladder. I'm not locked in on a young coach. I'm not against Marvin Lewis as an op as, a, as an option. I just don't think that we're locked in to a super experienced coach here uh, compared to something else. So this is going to be interesting to see how they play. And I think it's going to say a lot about what this team thinks about. No matter what, um, don't overreact. Because if and if you think you're going to overreact, you got to go over to cbd.detroitlionspodcast.com right away. Because that's a segue, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you've got pain, you've got anxiety, or you've got insomnia going on. And if you go to cbd.detroitlionspodcast.com, you can yes. get the creams. To help the muscle pain, I used some on my neck today while I was working. They also have the regular line of CBD to take care of, like I said, pain, insomnia, or um, anxiety. That's the other one. I don't have that <laughs> uh, thanks to this. And then I want to tell you guys, though, the chill line is something different. The chill line, the one that's sitting behind Sam Man there and the one that I got right here, this is going to make you feel like you were interacting with the plant from which it came, right? <laughs> the other stuff, you just take care of those those issues and you don't feel different. You can go drive a high-low or whatever. That chill line, you will melt into your couch for a couple hours. Don't eat one and say, hey, I don't feel anything in 20 minutes. Need another, you're gonna lose eight hours, okay? <laughs> it's, it's good stuff, very, very relaxing. It'll help you sleep for sure, stage four sleep. Go to cbd.detroitlionspodcast.com, get yourself set up. They got, if you use the keyword or the coupon code LIONS, you get 55% off every purchase. cbd.detroitlionspodcast.com. Okay, thank you guys for letting me squeeze that in. Um, okay, I wanna talk a little bit also about one of the things, I wanna go back to the process. So we talked about Bevel here. One of the things I liked about how they ran the process was when they interviewed Bevel, he was he was in the next room over and he did it via Zoom because they wanted consistency in the interviews. That's really cool. I mean, that to me is really, really cool. It probably stunk to be him and not be able to get the benefit of being there, but 
they did everything they could to evaluate things as on as fair a playing field as possible. And I think that's how you really find how the cream rises to the top. Do you think Bob Quinn would have done that? Oh, no. Do you think Ernie Acorsi would have done that? No. 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 No, not at all. No. Uh, y'all rock like 80s hair metal, and I'm inspired that by the sincerity of Riz's hair. Also, hey, Andy, how you doing? <laughs> Thanks, Matt, for the super chat. <laughs> All right. I was rocking with docking today. <laughs> rocking it out with the docking out. Um, so I'm, you know, I, I, I mean, much like you, Sam, man, about not picking a name for head coach right now. There's a couple of folks that I'd be happy with. What I'm really excited about is they're all really available. Everyone was freaking about about out about how long. It was taking us to go through mm-hmm. this process, and yet here we are. The Jags got their <laughs> the the Jags got their their talent, and uh, they're moving forward with that. They didn't they didn't dip into our, nope. our 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 bottle or our bucket. No one's dipped into our bucket in their hires right now. I'm feeling oh. good about this process. I really am, and I'm also feeling really good about these people being available. Tells me the Lions. Maybe you're a lot more, a lot better place to land than we were talking about or thinking a lot earlier. It is interesting that there hasn't been a lot of coaching hires just in general. Uh, you know, Houston's still open, Atlanta's still open. Those jobs were open before Detroit's were. Mm-hmm. They're not filled yet either. Uh, the Jets, they knew they were firing Adam Gates for a long time. They, you know, the, the Eagles just came open. They don't have a a real strong contender for who that's going to, I have a pretty good idea of who it's going to be, but I don't, they don't have that settled yet. It seems like as a league, they're much more not rushing into things because that's how you wind up with Adam Gase as your coach. That's how you wind (laughs) up, you know, um, pigeonholing yourself with Hugh Jackson again. These are, these are bad decisions. They're made rushed like that. I think the whole league as, and maybe some of it is to deal with the, 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 uncertainty of you know the interview process there that you're not greeting these people face to face they can't mm-hmm. really it is different doing it over zoom like if we were all in a room right now if we were sitting in a, in, in 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 same man's living room this would be a different conversation senior bowl be, remember how we did it at senior bowl it was the three of us hanging out mm-hmm. last year how different it was than doing it via the the yeah. the, the, the conference call thing yeah it's, it's, yeah, yeah. It, 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 there there is something that's that's tangibly different about that and i wonder if that i wonder if that factors into it too i don't know yeah, no, that's, that's that's good stuff. All right. I want you guys to uh, hit the like button out there. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thank you, everybody, for, for doing all that stuff. Also, I'm going to ask you a question for down in the comments. Who is your choice for head coach? And, and not just a name. Tell us why. Tell us what that person brings to the head coaching position. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll keep chatting and interacting with you guys uh, after the show. Uh, there's a lot still to go. I would look for a coach to come soon. I would look for a uh, um, a uh, a VP pro football <laughs> to to for, to, uh, to roll in. Um, what else are we looking for? Uh, coordinators. W- Wade Phillips. He'll yep. be named right after the coach. Uh, <laughs> you guys know I'm locked in on that, right? I mean, um, and uh, offensive the, coordinator. Marvin Lewis could technically be the defensive coordinator too. He did build the Ravens 2000 defense. Just saying. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Okay. I actually too. wouldn't mind that at all. Even a little uh, bit, I wouldn't mind that. Yeah. Yeah. One yeah. guy to keep an eye on is um, if he winds up being available is Steve Spagnolo, who worked very closely with Holmes when they were both with the Rams organization. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's just good. a name to throw it out there. Yeah. Um, and I don't, he is not a head coaching candidate. He should never be a head coaching candidate. He has the, the, the vibrancy of a stale blueberry bagel, but he's, uh, <laughs> he's a very good defensive this, mind. This is, this is what Riz, <laughs> this is what elevates Riz above everybody. <laughs> the suddenness of a refrigerator, <laughs> the, <laughs> the vibrance of a stale blueberry bagel. That's great. I love it. Um, one guy we haven't talked about much. I want to, um, I want to just quick roll this out here. Todd Bowles. Any thoughts there yes. from you guys? He should be a legitimate candidate, and I am quite honestly surprised that he is not already the head coach of the Atlanta Falcons. He did a great job there as their interim coach, better than Daryl Bevel did in Detroit. And the players loved him. The players wanted him. Uh, their uncertainty could be the Lions' gain there. Uh, I, I know people that worked directly under him when he was with the Buccaneers as their head coach. They liked him a lot. They felt that he was stacked against a general manager who didn't necessarily respect him all that well. Um, and they, they made some colossally bad moves. And I think that 
he 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 he's interviewing tomorrow. He's interviewing Friday. He's he's a guy. <laughs> Sammy, he's cracking me up. Um, <laughs> he's the guy. Have this that, discussion that, in my living room. Yeah. He, he absolutely. If that's your living room, I want to come over. <laughs> you look Sorry, like Cole. a smoothie king too, damn it. <laughs> I've got it all, Jeff. I've got it all. I'm coming over. <laughs> You can get the fish tank in the back like Jerry Jones. I'll see you some little dryers in the, in the back. <laughs> I'm going real obscure there. Sorry, um, but I I, uh, I hope that Todd Bowles gets serious consideration, and I, I I would be very I would be very excited if he was the hire. I would. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Good stuff. Um, good job, Riz. Not giving anything away under intense scrutiny and pressure. Hey, I don't know. What, I don't know what's going on. I know, but you got two <laughs> articles written. And I've been trying to slide very slyly and get something out of you, and you're just too good. As I have always said, you will know the difference between when I'm telling you something and when I'm telling you something. <laughs> <laughs> you got nothing to say. And right now, I'm telling you, I don't know. I don't know who's going to be the head coach. Um, I had a good idea that it was going to be Brad Holmes as of about Tuesday afternoon, but I didn't know it. Mm-hmm. I got I got lucky with the guests and and related that to you. So yeah, there you go. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I, I'm not I'm not this wizard. I'm not this plugged in insider. I haven't been in Allen Park since the the pandemic started. Yeah, it's the our insider yeah. stuff now is a lot less just because people are separated and it's so much more difficult. And you can't get you know. I remember talking to, to to Justin. One of the things is is he's thinking of an article. He used to go and be able to sit down and talk to a player. Justin Rogers. Sorry for those who don't know. Yeah. yeah. Um, he would sit down and interview a player in the locker room or hit a, have some one-on-one time and hit him, and, and it would help fill out what he was thinking in the article that he was going to write. Now everything's via Zoom. So when he starts asking those questions, everybody hears it. Everybody has the article. It's all the same kind of stuff. That That's a little bit about why the coverage from training camp was so unified and and mm-hmm. homogenous right mm-hmm. and 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 what i think led a lot of people astray because it, it, there's a lot of misses there um not an indictment of the, the the people writing but just the situation that they were in right so the same thing with the press the same thing with other pe- people you're just not able to see talk to and interact with those folks on an individual basis you have to have some really really good friendships connections and be texting these folks every day to get this kind of information it's it's not as it's not as easy as it used to be no, it really isn't. And uh, trusting those relationships, and this is one of the areas why, why when you're in a position like mine or Justin Rogers or Dave Burkett, that you don't burn your sources. Which is because a great time for a canary trap. Once, they ain't picking. They aren't. <laughs> yeah. They're not responding to that text from the six one six from me anymore. If I do that, <laughs> <laughs> and and this is why this is the time if you're a team going to do a canary trap. This is the time to do it. Yes. Get the mouthy it's, people it's, out, and you got yourself a nice, clean little organization because they're easy to catch right now. There you go. All right. All right. With that, we're going to call it. Thank you, everybody. Again, cbd.detroitlionspodcast.com, amazon.detroitlionspodcast.com. If you're going to go do the Amazon shopping experience, take a little bit of money out of Bezos' pocket, and he can share it with us so we can keep doing this great stuff. And also, if you want any Lions merch, uh, gear, any of the good stuff, or any you know Red Wings any of that stuff, fanatics.detroitlionspodcast.com. If you want to learn how to do great backgrounds, go to Sandman7773 <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> also, Jeff Rizzit on Twitter. Don't miss those guys. They are awesome. All right, with that, we're going to call it a show. Thank you, everybody. Use the comments in the subreddit. Give us your feedback. And also on Patreon, join the most intelligent Lions chat on the Internet. I have to tell you, great people in there. And uh, you want to get treated like a human being and uh, – have great, <laughs> great value, be valued like a human being. Look, I mean, that seems like a low bar, but you go try to chat on the internet about anywhere <laughs> else. You're not getting that. <laughs> Patreon.DetroitLionsPodcast.com. As little as a dollar a month donation there will get you into the Slack chat and you will enjoy. Uh, thank you all for doing that. Also follow us on Twitter at DET Lions Podcast, DET Lions Podcast. You see us on YouTube, youtube.com slash Detroit Lions Podcast. And be sure to go to DetroitLionsPodcast.com and subscribe to the podcast so we can show up in your little box uh, to magically. Right? <laughs> it's just your little thing that plays the, the music. I don't know what you're thinking. All right. Thank you for tuning in. We're going to see you next time with the Detroit Lions Podcast. Remember, no pants, no toasters, no hot tubs, no problems, because we are your Detroit Lions and Reddit Connection. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.